Hello friends. Good day to you all. I am Dr. S. Anbuchalvi, Assistant Professor of Chemistry, Sri Sharda College for Women, Salem. I am happy to welcome you to the introductory lecture of Thermodynamics. Thermodynamics. It is the combination of two Greek words. They are thermo and dynamics. Thermo means heat. Dynamics means flow. That is, thermodynamics implies the flow of heat. Or any other form of energy into or out of a system as it undergo a physical or chemical transformation. When we give heat to an engine, it moves. There are the principles of thermodynamics. Similarly, when we eat something, it is converted into heat in our body and we have energy to move. So our body also works as for the principle of thermodynamics. Our universe, this earth, all these are working on the principles of thermodynamics. Also, in our daily life, we come across many useful reactions such as burning of fuel to produce heat energy, flow of electron through the circuit to produce electrical energy, metabolic reaction to produce necessary energy for biological function and so on. So, thermodynamic principles are very very important in our daily life. Thermodynamics is mainly based on three empirical laws namely first law, second law and third law. Most important laws of physical chemistry that is Want Hoff, Raoult's law, distribution law, laws of thermochemistry, phase rule can be deduced from the laws of thermodynamics. The three laws can be used to predict whether a particular reaction is feasible or not under a given set of condition. It also helps in predicting how far a physical or chemical change can produced, proceed until the equilibrium condition is established. Thermodynamic terms. Before studying the laws of thermodynamics and their application, it is important to understand the meaning of a few terms used frequently in thermodynamics. They are System The universe is divided into two parts, the system and its surroundings. The system is a part of universe which is under thermodynamic consideration. It is separated from the rest of universe by real surface called boundary. Example for the system. The system may be water in a beaker, a balloon filled with air, an aqua solution of glucose. Next is surrounding. Everything in the universe that is not a part of the system is called surrounding. 
that is the rest of the universe is called surrounding boundary it is the real or imaginary surface separating the system from the surrounding is called boundaries on the basis of physical and chemical properties system can be divided into two types one is homogeneous system and other one is heterogeneous system what is homogeneous system a system is said to be homogeneous if the physical state of all the constituents are same for example mixture of gases completely miscible mixture of liquid all are having a single phase so called homogeneous what is heterogeneous system a system is said to be heterogeneous if the physical state of all its constituent is not same for example let us consider the mixture of oil and water when we mix oil and water oil is not completely miscible with water so oil and exist oil and water exist two layer exist as two layer so the system is not a homogeneous one it is a heterogeneous system the system can again be classified into three types based on the nature of boundaries they are open system closed system isolated system see here the isolated system is well insulated now let us see what is open system a system which can exchange both matter and energy with its surrounding is called open system example evaporation of hot water taken in a open conical flask as shown in the figure see the figure here the conical flask is open that is the water is heated in the open environment the flask is open so what happened the water vapor escape from the conical flask to the surrounding similarly the heat also transfer with the surrounding that is in the system both matter matter means here water vapor and energy that is heat energy is transferred to the surrounding so called open system generally all the living things and chemical reactions are open system because they exchange matter and energy with the surrounding closed system a system which can exchange energy but not matter with its surrounding is called closed system example hot water contained in a closed conical flask as in the figure the water is heated in the closed conical flask so that the water vapor cannot escape from the conical flask since the conical flask is closed by a cork but the system can it change heat energy with the surrounding so 
This is an example for closed system, isolated system. A system which can exchange neither energy nor matter with its surrounding is called a isolated system. Example, tea or hot water in a thermos flask. See the figure here. The water is heated in a closed conical flask not only closed, well insulated conical flask so that there is <coughs> no heat energy as well as matter transferred to the surrounding. Now let us see Thermodynamic properties. Some of the properties of a system depends on its mass or size, whereas other properties do not depend on its mass or size. Based on this, the thermodynamic properties of a system are grouped as extensive and intensive property. Extensive property. Extensive property of a system is that which depends upon the amount of substance present in the system. For example, mass, volume, free energy, number of moles, enthalpy, entropy, heat capacity. All are depends upon the amount of substance present in the system, so called extensive property intensive property the intensive property of a system is one which is independent of the amount of substance present in the system example temperature pressure density concentration viscosity refractive index surface tension here temperature means it means boiling point, melting point, as well as freezing point. These properties does not depend upon the amount of substance present in the system. For example, if you find the boiling point of 100 ml of water, the result is 100 degree Celsius. If you heat if you find the boiling point of 1000 ml of water, again the boiling point of water is 100 degree Celsius. So, it does not depend upon the, the boiling point does not depend upon the amount of water molecule. Then, let us see the important term thermodynamic process. The operation by which a system changes from one state to another state is called a process. The thermodynamic process can be carried out in different ways and under different condition. The process can be classified into various types. First we see about cyclic process. When a process, when a system, after completing a series of changes, return to its original state, it is said to have completed a cycle, such a process is known as cyclic process. For cyclic process, there is no change in enthalpy, internal energy, pressure, temperature and volume. So that dH, dE, dP, dt and dv all are equal to 0. Reversible process. The process in which the system and surrounding can be restored to the initial state from the final state without producing any changes in the 
thermodynamic properties of universe is called reversible process there are two important condition for the reversible process to occur firstly the process should occur infinitesimally slowly and secondly throughout the process the system and surrounding must be in equilibrium with each other that is a thermodynamic reversible process is a process which is carried out infinitesimally slowly so that the driving force is only infinitesimally greater than the opposing force there is no reversible process occur in nature then let us see irreversible process an irreversible process is a process which does not takes place infinitesimally slowly that is when a process goes from initial to the final state in a single step and cannot be carried out in the reverse order all the natural processes are irreversible for example water flow down the hill fruits fall from the tree these process never be reversed so all natural occurring process are irreversible in nature next is isothermal process an isothermal process is one in which the temperature of the system remains constant during the change from its initial to final state the system exchanges heat with its surrounding and the temperature of the system remains constant for this purpose the experiment is often performed in a thermostat so for isothermal process there is no change in temperature so dt is equal to 0 then adiabatic process a process is said to be adiabatic if no heat enters or leaves the system during any step of process this condition this adiabatic condition is attained by thermally insulating the system for all adiabatic process dq is equal to 0 that is there is no change in heat energy next one is isobaric process a system is said to be a process is said to be isobaric if the pressure of the system remains constant that is for isobaric process dp is equal to 0 isochoric process the process is said to be isochoric if the volume of the system remains constant that is dv is equal to 0 combustion of fuel in a bomb calorimeter is an example for isochoric process now let us see thermodynamic functions thermodynamic functions are broadly classified into two type they are state function and path function a state function are variable which are determined only by the initial and final state of the system and not by the path followed during the changes from initial to final state example internal energy enthalpy entropy free energy and work function we know well these things are measured only in the initial and final state of the system 
Next one is path function. A path function is a thermodynamic property of the system whose value depends on the path by which the system changes from its initial to final state. Example, work and heat. Work will have different values if the process is carried out reversibly or irreversibly. Limitations of thermodynamics. We know well thermodynamics carries high practical values but bears certain limitation. They are the laws of thermodynamics apply only to matter in bulk and not to individual atoms. It does not tell anything about the rate at which the given process may proceed. Thank you all.